think one consequence of not having that downtime is not being able to to know what your mind is like and not being able to view it objectively because I think a lot of people and I think you did mention in the book that you struggled with this where you have like a horrible thought and then you identify yourself with that thought and think of yourself as That's such right. a horrible person for having mm-hmm. it but this is something I got I went into with a lot of research looking into free will that we I don't believe we have any free will okay. and so if we're talking about um, thoughts themselves if you meditate and observe your thoughts as they arise you realize you're not making those thoughts they just right. appear so I suppose the the one thing we might have some control over which I'm not convinced we do is how we identify ourselves with those thoughts mm-hmm. so if we have such a horrible thought um, do we say we're a horrible person or we say oh that was a horrible thought and move on mm-hmm. that's not us mm-hmm. um, so what what advice would you maybe have for someone who is experiencing that sort of um, mental anxiety over the thoughts they have? Well, I mean, the first thing I would say is if that you're, if you're someone who, like many of us who constantly is distracting yourself so that you don't know your own mind and your own percolating thoughts, mm-hmm. um, when you first try to do this exercise, whether it's through a moving meditation or a sitting resting meditation, you will likely be, be overwhelmed because you will the, the dam will come crashing down and then all mm-hmm. of those thoughts you've been trying to run away from will inundate you. So that that's scary and hard, but the longer you allow yourself to just let those thoughts roll down the river, um, number one, the, the less it will become, the quieter that river will become as it eventually spreads out you know, onto the mm-hmm. plain. Um, and the key there is just, to not, and this is what sort of the definition of mindfulness practice is, it's an overused word, but is not to um, judge yourself for the thoughts, not to, as you say, say, oh my God, I'm a freak, but instead just be curious, you know, be curious and you are not your thoughts, right? You are, you can have thoughts without that being something, you know, awful that you, that you're going to do, or that you, that you even want to do. Um, But instead just sort of be curious, like, I wonder what that's about, you know? And over time, again, I think through this default, through the integration of the various parts of the brain, um, it is possible to sort of make sense of those things as long as we're not running away from it. Mm. So the, the thought that, um, the thought that you mentioned in the book is, is that horrible thought of um, killing your baby. Right. And so like, but then you came to the conclusion that it wasn't that you wanted to kill your baby. It was that you were so petrified of some harm coming to your child. Right. And this is, this is something similar that, um, so my dad a few days ago had a dream. They've just got a new puppy and he had a dream of, um, I think the puppy died in the dream and he was mm-hmm. horrified by it. And that was, that was actually very helpful because I told him, well, you're not actually yeah. thinking you want to kill your puppy. You're actually just really worried that something's going to happen because it's so fragile. Right. That's right. This yeah. vulnerable creature is, is in your possession and you're responsible for it. And so the fear of somehow not being able to protect this vulnerable creature is now manifesting as you actively harming the creature. And that's exactly what happened to me as a young mother. But when I could slow myself down and allow myself to actually see the thought, because it was really right outside of conscious awareness, I could have just not seen it. Right. And, and then it would have stayed in the shadows and I would have continued to have enormous anxiety about being a new mother, but instead I let it come out and I was like, oh, that's awful. What does that mean? Does that mean I want to kill my baby? But again, I just let it roll and observe more. No. And I came to understand, no, I, you know, I, that's not what it means. It means I'm really anxious about harm to this small creature and I'm feeling the weight of, of that responsibility. So I think, um, you know, it's scary to look at those things and sort of accept um, those kinds of thoughts, but when we can quietly and calmly do that, it can be incredibly empowering because we can gain confidence in our ability to understand ourselves, to face new challenges, to tolerate distress, um, instead of constantly just trying to outrun it. Cause the outrunning thing just doesn't work. No matter how fast you run, you're, you're never going to run fast enough. It's always going to catch up better to just stop, turn around, look at it and go, okay, this is this is, uh, you know, what I have to deal with. Yeah, I think that's where the usefulness of looking at things objectively or using objectivity comes in, where observing your, observing your thoughts is a subjective way to look at it, but um, perhaps breathing is one thing where if people just start taking some deep breaths, slowing their heart rate, if they um, 
widen their visual field that's another thing like when you're like these are all things that your your body automatically does when you have these thoughts or when you're stressed so doing that just slowing your heart rate de-stresses you so that you can look at things more objectively rather than panicking over them that's right right and again a key is there is not not saying oh my god i'm a horrible person or i'm a freak or i can't believe i had and part of why why i wanted to share that that was like i'm a doctor right and i have some crazy thoughts um, you know, it doesn't make me a crazy person or a bad person. Like that's the brain is sort of like a, a bubbling cauldron and uh, just stuff bubbles up, you know, and that's normal, natural. And if, if we're not consciously aware of it, then sometimes it comes out in our dreams, right? Like your, your dad's dream, it'll come out in that way, but it's okay to let yourself just be curious about what's going on in your brain, you know, thinking about thinking, so to speak. Mm-hmm. 